Hi, and welcome to my messy muse. Free is a bird in the sky, that is what you are. A place for kid lit peeps to embrace the messiness of their everyday lives. Feel the beat of your heart. We turn it around here on my messy muse. With fabulous kidlit talent, editors, and agents who share their own personal struggles, we will inspire your kidlit journey. Don't wait for tomorrow. I'm your host, Michelle McAvoy, an author, attorney, and mom of two whose life is really, really messy. I turn it around almost every single day, and so can you. Hi, and welcome to episode two of my Messy Muse. The interview took place in October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And for that month, I interviewed Amber Marchese, a breast cancer survivor and a former real housewife of New Jersey. Amber is inspirational in her strength and her creativity, and I hope you enjoy the interview. There is a warning that comes along with this interview, however. We do talk about boobs. Amber, thank you for taking the time with us today. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So good. So, so good. So, for many of our listeners, they probably know you as a reality TV star um, from The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Marriage Boot Camp. Um, you've also been on Restaurant Stakeout. Um, but for those that um, probably don't know, you and I go way, way back. Yes. You yeah, are- you don't, yeah, you definitely don't know me as that. You, you know me as your brother's girlfriend from a long, long, long time ago. <laughs> right, right, right. So early 20s, when the good old days, Amber and I have known each other for a very long time. Um, and she's fabulous. And I asked her to be on My Messy Muse for a few reasons. Um, first, because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And Amber is a breast cancer survivor. And secondly, because she um, she is a creative for all of our creative listeners out there. She is an actress. She has um, she she is a reality TV star, and um, she also is an inspirational speaker, uh, which I think is going to be interesting to our listeners as well. So um, I think that we can learn a lot from Amber's story, and that's why I asked her to be on. So thank you, Amber, for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And then we're going to just start, so we're going to start off a little bit to talk about your breast cancer diagnosis and sort of your journey in that respect. Um, so can you tell us, I believe you were first diagnosed when you were 31. Can you tell us a little bit about that and sort of the stage that you were diagnosed with? Sure, sure. So briefly, I was getting out of my second pregnancy. I was breastfeeding my daughter, Isabella. Uh, and I had them back to back. So I had Corbin in 2007 and then 12 months later I had Isabella. I started breastfeeding and because of breastfeeding I was able to, you know, feel the lumps very, very easily. Uh, you know, cause my boobs are a big old mess after that. <laughs> yes, yes, I can, I can relate. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was able to feel the lumps and I felt several. And, you know, I, I didn't think breast cancer. I didn't, I didn't know anything about breast cancer. So I, I mentioned it to my husband very nonchalantly, just like, Hey, I have these lumps. And he, and he's worked in, you know, cancer, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals for, you know, years ago, but he, he immediately, immediately says, I want you to go get it checked out. And that made my heart stop. I was like, oh, my God. You know, like, okay, well, what happened to you saying, oh, it's nothing. I'm sure it's nothing. But he didn't. So I went, and uh, it was, you know, it was pretty quick after that. I had an, an ultrasound, um, sonogram ultrasound, and then I had a biopsy and it turned out to be invasive carcinoma. Uh, it was the worst, one of the worst days of my life to even hear something like that. I, I wasn't expecting that. I don't know, I was like the hardest punch in the stomach here. I'm like right. with my two babies and starting, a, you know, I just got married, just had babies and I get this, this diagnosis and, um, it was thankfully, thank God it was stage one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my doctor still wanted to hit me as hard as they could because of my age and, you know, being a young mom. Uh, so they, they gave me, um, chemotherapy. I was HER2 positive. So I went through Herceptin. That was for a year and a half, I believe. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a year and a half. And then I did a double mastectomy. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, prophylactic on the other side, but to me, I was like, just get these suckers off. I was right. This <laughs> again. Um, yeah. And then uh, that was that. Um, you know, life life went on. And then fast forward when I was 37, actually just a couple months shy of that, like, you know, like you're clear, out, you're out of that, like, you know, you know that risk, risk time. Yep. Uh, and um, I found another lump. Oh. I found another lump and it turned out to be cancer again. Okay. Uh, so I went back onto Herceptin. I did not even do a chemotherapy, thank God. Because that was extremely hard on the body. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, I lost my hair, all my, you know, my eyebrows, my eyelashes, everything. It was very, very difficult to go through. Uh, so this one, actually, I didn't even feel anything, really. I went, I did um, additional surgery to remove more tissue. Um, and it was in the same spot. So I'm not even, no one really can give me an answer if it's residual, if it was a new primary. But um, we just treat it as if it was just, you know, new primary, and that's that. So I did another year and a half of Herceptin. That was three years ago. Oh, and I did radiation. Duh. Uh, yeah, so. Radiation the first time around or the no, second time the around? the second time. The second time around, I did okay. high-dose um, high radiation. Okay. Um, yeah, and um, went every single day for six weeks. Yeah. And, was, uh, and you know, I just it's weird how my brain works it just really just pushed it out you know the first time that it happened it was like oh my god that shock and awe and I felt like I was getting punched the second time it was just like what the like like are you kidding like I just need to get this done and move on with my life and that's really the mentality I had I didn't even skip a beat I didn't even cry I didn't even cry I sat down on the ground with my husband and the kids were eating dinner and we just were like we could I didn't even have it in me to cry. I just was like, let's just get this done, you know? Are you freaking kidding me? There goes my summer. Yeah, no, like at that point, I mean, I can imagine. I know how of a how much of a tough chick you are in real life, but that doesn't mean that things don't affect us. But I, I would guess then at that point you're like, you know what, enough is enough already. Like get this crap over with, you know, I want to move on. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's exactly how it was. And so then when you, so when you did your first treatment, you did about a year and a half of treatment. Um, I guess for the other women that are maybe going through the process or um, are about to start sort of their treatment process, mm-hmm. is there anything, I guess two things. One is, was there something specific that you did to sort of distract yourself when you were going through the treatments? Or if there was some, something specific that you did to help you sort of get your mind in a better place while you were going through treatments that you would recommend sure. to other women? Absolutely. So the first time around, it was it was uh, easy to keep distracted with the, with the babies. I had little ones, literally like babies. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, you know, teaching them how to walk or, you know, potty train or, you know, whatever it is, teach them their ABCs, their one, two, threes. I was, you know, I really did a lot of homeschooling. Uh, you know, I waited a whole year until they actually went on to kindergarten because I kept them home with me. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I really just dove into being mommy uh, to those little little ones who were, you know, really counting on me. They didn't even know I was sick. You know, they just, I, I, I don't even, they didn't even see me bald. Like I just either had a do-rag on, you know, I had like a really cute one, a little Gucci mm-hmm. one put on and it was so of course, really of course she did. <laughs> yeah, I love a Gucci one. It was really cute, you know? Uh-huh. And then or my I had my wigs. The second time around, honest you know, the kids are not older. They're you know there it was a different feel, you know, it was more like my husband and I would we actually would just make it a morning. Like we'd get up in the morning, have our coffee we got go up, we drive all the way up to uh, New Brunswick, bang out, you know, bang out the treatment, and then we'd hit the gym. And we would just make it, we made it a part, we didn't even, like, we didn't talk how sucky this was, we didn't talk about any of that. We just got up, we did it, we went to the gym, we banged out an hour, and, you know, with the weights, mm-hmm. and as if it was just my new normal for six weeks. And then I would come pick up the kids and take them to the pool, like, that was, that was it. Don't so now, I didn't complain. I just did it. <laughs> yeah, you just went. So now the second time around, did you tell the kids? Yes, they they knew. I mean, they were older, so um, you know, eight nine. So yeah, it, it definitely it was. Uh, but it was weird. You know, they they needed to see me strong. Right. It's, it, it's not like I don't even think they remember anything because I again I didn't make it a big deal. It was just like oh well, mommy's got to take some new new medicine. You know, we gotta we gotta get this thing going. So, so did, you, did you tell them that you had cancer, or did you just tell them that your that mommy's sick? No, I told them that I had cancer again. You did? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. Okay. Isabella knew anyway. She 
she told me before I even got re-diagnosed, she said my breast cancer is back. Oh, no. Is yeah. that crazy? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I was at the chiropractor, and she, she goes, she goes, Mom, why are, you, why are you at the doctor's? She goes, is it because of the breast cancer again? I'm like, no, sweetheart, I'm just getting my, you know, neck aligned and everything. And she goes, no, she goes, I, she goes, I know you're doing it for the breast cancer. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, oh. she, she knew. She knew before it was even happening. She's wow. Very, uh. She's in tune. These little kids, they're they're in tune more than yeah. we are. They're not as distracted, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah. With with life. Well, um, think about it too. She was the original. Like it was because of her that I found the, found it in the beginning. Because I, you know, it was breastfeeding, and she, I was breastfeeding her. Right. And then so I found it that the first time, and then the second time I was really kind of paying attention and 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 looking out for it too. Yeah, I mean, thank God. I mean, you were so young at 31 years old. Did the doctors say to you that this is, you know, it's just, it's so different to be diagnosed so young? Or is this something that's more common than I even, that I know of or that people know of? No, I definitely was one of the, when I walked into the chemo room, I was literally the youngest. Right. But, you know, they were all very much older than me. You know, once in a while I would see, um, you know, a young person come in and, uh, unfortunately one of them passed and that was very, very difficult to oh. experience. Yeah. And the other one's fine as a baby and she's, she's doing great. So, you know, uh, yeah, so I definitely, and especially back then, I think there was less awareness that, that a young person can get it. In right. Fact, I'll never forget my oncologist. I asked her, I said, why did you, she was pushing me to go get more tests. Even when all the other doctors were pushing me away, they're like, oh, you're too young. And I had two doctors tell me that. I went back and it was my oncologist and she says, no, I want you to get an ultrasound and a biopsy 100%. Yeah. I don't want, I know something's wrong. So, you know, even when I wanted to be like, oh, they're fine. I'm fine. You know, like she was like, no. And, and then, you know, about a year later, I said, what made you do that? And she said that she, when in her residency, she had a girl that was 24 years old. Oh my gosh. And she went and she wanted to get, uh, uh, was that, um, you know, when you do a scan of your breast, mm -hmm. an ultrasound, uh, like a mammogram. Mm -hmm. And they turned her away and she'd come to find out six years later, she passed oh. on, on her floor. Yeah, like, you know, on the floor she was, um, yeah. she was, uh, uh, working at. And she, you know, so she said that she would never let another woman do that. And, yeah. So well, well, she she saved your life, I think, did. for for sort of really pushing and not listening to maybe what some of the other doctors were saying. So I think, you know, maybe a takeaway for that for women that are listening is, you know, know your body. And I, I talked about this last month too when we did the ovarian cancer awareness with Anna. You know, sort of know your body and, um, you know, maybe go for that second opinion or push. You know, because sometimes people, um, you know, they don't they don't pursue maybe when when we should. So. So I get a lot of emails uh, throughout the years about, you know, what did it feel like? What did, you know, you know, should I go get it biopsy? You know, my doctor's telling me it's just the cyst or whatever it is. It's fluid filled. You know, it's no big deal. And I always say there's, it's always better to be cautious mm -hmm. than to regret not doing that extra step. So if you, like you said, you, you know, you could feel, if, if you feel that this, this is a foreign part of the body that's never been there before, it came out of nowhere, it, and you can't go by feel. Sometimes my first one was a little squishier, my second one was harder, you mm -hmm. know, felt more precise. And it's funny because I almost went into the trap of, you know what, I bet, it's, I bet you it's nothing because it's, it's hard, it doesn't feel the same. So right. you can't go, you really have to just, just go, you get that second opinion, and if you feel you want to, you want, um, you want it to, uh, even further press, then you do it. You demand it, and you say, "No, I don't. I'm not accepting that. I want, I want. Um, what is that called when you when you take the fluid out? Biopsied. Bi yeah. To me, or biopsied is like the only real way yeah. you'll ever know if cancers or not because yeah. you're taking the cells out and you're studying them. Right, right, right. And it's scary because it's something, you know, it's not pleasant, I'm sure, but, you know, you just, like you said, you rather, you have to be safe rather than sorry um, and know your body. Um, mm -hmm. So when you, and so then let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about Real Housewives because I know people listening are are probably interested to know, but um, so when you went on Real Housewives, you, this was after your battle, 
Um, but it was portrayed on the show, we know, because I, I watched you, and I love you, and I watched you. And so how do you feel like, um, you know, what was it like sharing it with the world in that, in that sort of, in, in that medium, number one? And then two, how do you feel like they did portraying it? Yeah, so um, I went on thinking that this is a platform to speak about breast cancer, you know, with young ones. And if even if I, you know, reach one person out there, then that's awesome, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of regret speaking about it on on uh, the house website because you know it may it gave people the option of you know making it look ugly, you know, mm-hmm. like when. Dina said that comment about like calling it book answer or, you know, Melissa saying I was using it as in a way of getting sympathy. Like it, it, it left too much to editing and uh, other people making it, you know, uh, you know, annoying to bring up, you know, like as if this was my crutch. And, and, you know, it was, and if you remember, I went through like a little scare on there and this was right before um, I actually was re-diagnosed. <laughs> so. <laughs> My intuitions were correct, and um, I ended up having it again. So, right, yeah, uh, it it was definitely scary, but at the same time, it, it, it's, at the same time, it is what it is. I, I'm done on the positive side because of that. Uh, I've done many speaking engagements in front of 500 plus people. You know, it, it, I'm not a shy person <laughs> when I I can talk to a whole room full of people, and you know, sometimes they were going through chemo just like I did and I could see their looks on their faces but they're like they're shaking their head yes like I get you I understand what you're saying and it's it's a it's a camaraderie a sisterhood you know and and that is the amazing part of it so yeah it kind of sucked but at the same time I in retrospect I see why it had to happen Right. So, I mean, you know, it's sort of that thing where everything's a journey, right? And so sometimes we do things that maybe didn't work out in the way that we had envisioned, but it's sort of part of the bigger plan. So perhaps Real Housewives gave you a platform. I mean, it made you more, you know, made you more of a household name or more well-known and sort of maybe gave you that, you feel like it gave you that platform to talk, (coughs) excuse me, about breast cancer on a, on a, on a, on a bigger, like on a bigger stage, I guess, not on TV, but just being as an inspirational speaker. Right. Right. Um, and so, but when you were on the show, you did, didn't you do your five year checkup on the show? Mm hmm. And then something came back a little weird. Okay. Yeah. And it was, it was a reason why I wasn't going down to Florida, but then it was fine. It was nothing to be worried about. And I went down and then, you know, fast forward two years later, <coughs> it, it, it was, catching something, something small. So, yeah. Right. And so then how was, how did you make that decision to put that on camera? So that real intimate, you know, moment with the doctor, um, in that five year checkup. I asked, you know, there were certain things that I asked. There's obviously certain things that, um, are out of your control, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, between what production wants, between what the network wants, between what editing wants. So, so there were certain things that, you know, they ask you, what do you want to, what do you want to do? Like, and that, what do you want to bring on camera? And I said to them, church, my faith and breast cancer and my children obviously are really, really important to me. And I don't care, you know, I'll fight all day long, but those three are not negotiable. They're right. part of me and I want, uh, I want, uh, I want to bring them along. And I asked my doctor, my doctor was fine, <laughs> more than fine. Right. And he was amazing on there. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, you know, th- those were the, that was the deal, you know, they could, they could, you know, I could fight, like I said, I could argue all day long, but those, those three uh, things were not negotiable. Right. Okay, good. I mean, and I think, you know, I know you and I know that your intentions were pure and in, in sort of putting your experience and, you know, and, and your cancer and in your battles, um, on the screen, Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, like you said, sometimes with editing and sensationalizing, you know, things happen. Sure. Um, But, and so now you're, you you no longer did the housewives. um, And then I think maybe you're, when you were diagnosed the second time, I believe you blogged. Did you not? Did you blog about your journey on the second time around? For people.com. For people. 
for people. Okay, great. And so, and I think this is interesting for our listeners too. So a lot of our listeners, like you, as you know, are writers and creatives. And I, and for me, you know, writing, I started to write after what happened with my dad and it was really an outlet for me. So did blogging sort of help you through the, the second time around? Was it yes. more, uh, and, and I guess it was also to also teach women. So can you tell yeah. me a little bit about that experience, the blogging? Yeah. So that's right. I almost forgot I did that. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I was actually, I'm, I'm very proud of that. I was actually one of the longest, they, that's what they told me, one of the longest celebrity bloggers that they've ever had. Usually it's a very, every time they ask the celebrity to blog and write for people.com, it's very, very short lived. Mm -hmm. uh, and mine was one of the longest. So it got a little technical sometimes with, you know, with the medical aspect of it. But I uh, people really appreciated that, you know, they didn't know half of the stuff. And they're like, oh, my God, you know, you just now I get it. And like I, you know, I'm hearing the drugs that you're on and hearing the chemotherapy. So they would bring my information to their doctor and say, hey, you know, she's on this. She's talking about this drug, you know, you know, and it opened up a dialogue for their for, you know, their their doctor, you know. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it was. And then, you know, in conjunction with that, it was really therapeutic for me. You know, sometimes, you know, just sitting down and writing it all out, just really put it into a different perspective uh, for me, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And then sometimes I feel like there's things that we we're feeling, but we don't necessarily want to articulate to other people that we can maybe put down in words and share. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. like it's a little bit easier sometimes um, than having to talk about it. So um, I, it was interesting for me to see that you did that um, to get through the second time around. Yeah. It was so, a I like yeah. it. <laughs> so a couple questions about. Um, I guess a few things is if there's any, now that you're a survivor, is there anything that you would have done differently when you're going through your diagnosis and your treatments that you would sort of say to other women that are going through it today? Something that you would, that you did, but you would have done differently. And if not, that's fine too. You know, um, no, I honestly can say that I did everything that I possibly could have done. You know, mentally, you know, I didn't turn away from God and get angry. I turned it actually closer to faith and I, uh, closer to being a good mom, you know, closer to being a good wife, you know, you know, family person. So no, I, I think I did. It was a real eye opener for me as a human being to go through something like that. You know, it's, you know, I did survive it. So I can honestly say it was a gift you know, at this point, you know, it was, it was a gift. It was a gift to open my eyes to see the world in a different, different way. You know, life is so short. It's not guaranteed tomorrow. You can be walking <laughs> and, and, and having a blast one day and have a diagnosis the next. Like, and that's really how it happened. You know, um, I'm yeah. happy and I'm newly wed and I'm having children. And the next day I'm getting diagnosed. Like that's not like that. It's very hard for the, for the mind to wrap yourself around that. And this put this into that, that, you know, into my, the forefront of my thought every single day. That's how I live my life now. It's a new me, you know, uh, nothing is guaranteed and, uh, I'm living, every, you know, I mess up. Are you kidding me? I have bad days where I suck as being a mom and <laughs> we all do. We all do. Right? <laughs> like, I was like one day, but sometimes I'm like, damn, I'm good. Like that was awesome, man. Yeah. Good you. Next day I'm like, dude, you suck. Dude. Oh my God. More than I like to admit this morning, I, I actually texted my, my um, daughter's teacher cause I yelled at her this morning and I felt so bad. I was like, and she's like, what? She's fine. So like we, I think we think that we're worse than we really are sometimes, but, um, you know, life's not easy, that's for sure. And that's why, you know, my messy muse is all about like sort of embracing our messiness and, you know, going forth um, to be the best person or people that we can be every day. You know, like I say, I, I, I turn it around almost every single, my life is so messy, I turn it around almost every single day, whether it's from my relationship with my kids or my husband or my work, or whatever it is, I always feel like, Something needs to be, <laughs> something needs to I be. I think that's such a good point. Like, every, like, and I think people, you know, we, it's like literally you have an opportunity every single day, every hour. Hell, you could just say like the last 24 hours sucked and now it's right starting right now. It's going to be good, you know? That's it. It's going to be good right now. Like I say that to my son all the time, like Danny, turn it around. Like, let's like, come on now, you know? Yeah. So if, if I could say right. it to him then I should be able to say it to myself. Yeah. Um, so and I don't harp that. on it and leave and it in the past. <laughs> you know, exactly. I've absolutely. Um, 
I read somewhere, so this is a funny one. I read somewhere that you actually hug trees. Now, I don't know you as a tree hugger at all. Um, so I really need to hear a little bit more about this tree hugging, like if it's like one particular tree that you're in love with or like a whole bunch of different trees. Like, All right, so let's hear about the tree hugging. That's freaking great. Okay, yes, so, so you know my mom. My mom's from Cal, she's a California hippie, you know her. Yeah, I know, but you were never a California no, hippie. No, I never gravitated to her that side, and, and then as I'm getting older, like I, I feel energy, and if I go to a tree, I could actually feel the pulsating energy from that tree. So okay. I start doing like these like experiments where if I wasn't feeling well, like if I had a headache, I'd go outside barefoot, I'd go over there, and I'd touch, and it could be any tree, it doesn't matter. Some trees, uh, have it, it changes every day. Some trees are emitting more energy than others, but it changes every day, like just like people, right? Right. So I'll actually go up and I'll I'll put my my hands around the tree and I'll just sit there and I feel better. My headache goes away. So I started doing that with my children. Wow. And just, yeah, like I know this is really kooky, but um, I don't read any books on this. I just do this myself. I have an acre of woods in my backyard, and I love I love the woods. So I'll have my kids do the same thing, and now they're starting to get it. So yeah. plus, it gets them out of the house, and they're not sitting and watching TV or any, you know, on the video games, right? Right. So they go outside, and they're really becoming. It's so important for them to be connected with the earth and have that like energy, feel that energy that it does emanate. Like there's, it's from the ground, it's from the trees, like you from the mushrooms, like little moss on the ground. Yeah. You, can, you just do it. Just go up and just feel it. Yeah, Everyone yeah. Has that ability, and it's like I'm not special. I don't have like some. No, I know. No, and you know what? I I joke with you, but I do I do believe in in sort of in the, the a source of energy, and you know, and feeling. You know, even in yoga, when you sort of center yourself and you like sort of try to feel the energy in the source. So I. I, I I, I make fun of you because I just I'm picturing you walking around in New Jersey <laughs> hugging trees and um but no but I no but I I appreciate that no and I appreciate that you know that it helps you know yeah. that and even just getting outside and and being one with nature has yeah. to help it has especially to help especially right? children especially especially in this day and age where you know I'm trying to fight my kids off on you know their friends have freaking social media accounts and Instagram accounts I'm like oh hell no. Not happening. Get off that computer. Get off that phone. No, you're not having a phone. Stop freaking asking me. Go hug a tree. That's what yeah. I mean. <laughs> They're like, my mom's a mess. But no, that's, but you know what? I, I might try it. They actually cut down most of the trees in my neighborhood, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, no. but yeah, no, but you know what? No, that's a good point though, because the kids are always on, on social media. They're always wanting to, the boys want to play the video games all the time. So I think. Just, um, I think if we're just getting back to maybe just quieting ourselves a little bit and quieting our minds and our lives, it, it just can be health. It can just be healthier, right? It can't hurt. It definitely and can't your, hurt. Take the shoes off too, because there's there's actually like an electric magnetic field going through the earth that also is very healing. You know, if in, in, instead of going into that cabinet and taking out the medicine and giving them Tylenol, send right. them outside first. See how that works. Even yeah. just on grass. You have grass, right? Yeah. Yes, I have grass. Without, uh, shoes on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, and yeah, the fresh air, definitely for sure. Yeah. Um, so let me think. What other things? So I guess one thing was there anything when you were going through your treatments that you um, that somebody said to you or acted in a way that you hated, right? So a lot of times when things happen. Um, and you're not the person that it happens to. You're the other person that like tries to be the tries to do the right thing or say the right thing. But we don't always know what to say or do when people give us bad news, right? So, was there something or some way that somebody reacted towards you that you didn't like that you would that you could tell us? That is actually a freaking fantastic question. Oh, well, thank you. A really awesome question. Yes. Okay. When someone tells you, don't tilt your head and say, oh my god, oh, how are you feeling? No, no, no. Don't do that. Just say, hey, uh, you know, I'm really, that's, that's really sucky that you just got that info, that, that news. But you know what? You're going to beat this. Move on. You know? Yeah. You'll be fine. Just, yeah. you'll be fine. Just do what you got to do. Do what the doctor says. Go outside, hug a couple trees, and you're, just, you're good to go, man. <laughs> yeah, because I guess, I guess the point being, you don't want, you don't want to, be, you don't want people to feel bad for you. That's not what you want in that moment. You want people to actually be strong for you and to and to, and to help push, you know, push you forward and bring you up. 
Like, if you want to be like, hey, can I make you a dinner one night, you know, or can I watch your kids so you could go take a nap, you know, those are things. That's cool, you mm -hmm. know. But just so I used to get the health head tilt probably five years, five freaking years after my oh. treatment, I still would get the head head tilt and be like, oh, how are you doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm like, like I look, I, clearly I'm doing okay. I'm standing here before you. <laughs> right, like, all right, next, next person. Um, yeah, no, I, that's a good point. And I, and I hope I don't do that. I don't think I usually do that, but I think that some people, frankly, it's not like they're doing it on purpose either. Some people just don't know how to respond. And so they respond in a very awkward way. And I know I've done that before. And I, and then I say to myself, oh wow, I just said, like the worst thing, I feel like I just reacted bad. And I've said to a friend of mine, like, I feel like I didn't react the right way. And she said, no, you're fine. You know, but yeah. I think that's okay too. If you feel like you came off odd or strange, you can always say to the person, I'm sorry. I feel like I didn't react in the best manner. You know what I mean? And that's totally cool. That is totally cool. And and honestly, I only said something is because you, you, you asked and, 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 but you are so right. I never, like, I don't even remember who did it, which one of my friends. So it's not like I now personally have a vendetta for that person that did it. No, it, of course it's not. It's not worth it. Doesn't, it doesn't, didn't mean that much. But I do remember that that was, it kind of made me feel like a cancer patient. Yeah. Does that make sense? Versus just, like, I'm a mom who's just going through a really sucky time. Yeah. Uh, like, I felt all of a sudden when they did that, like, as if I really had, it separated, it separated me from a healthy individual to a person who was going through cancer. Yeah, like you, and like you were somebody that was worthy of feeling bad for, which nobody wants to be that person, you know? Um, no, and no, thank you for being honest and answering that. I, I wanted the, I wanted the honest answer because I think people would like to know. I, um, and so before we end, um, I just wanted like some last parting words of, of advice or wisdom from you. So my messy muse is about sort of really emerging from darkness or using your messiness to channel it into a positive. So um, do you have any sort of profound words of wisdom to leave with our audience? Ooh. <laughs> or, or not so profound. But I, I, I have something from a prior interview that you did that I loved. And I could read it if you want, or I could, or you can. So, what is it? so in a prior in interview, you said, if you hit a hard time, don't lose faith. Just figure out what you are meant to learn. I mean, why waste a perfectly good life lesson when you can use it to, begun, to become one badass human being? Yeah. Live, live your dreams and know and know it may come in an unexpected area. Yes, that is and 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 just kind of just bob and weave in life. That's like kind of like boxing, man. You just you're you're gonna you're gonna get hit. You're gonna get hit, man. You just but you got to learn how to hit back and 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 just how you how you're gonna be a stronger person. And honestly, one of the biggest things too, I'm gonna add to that is. I'm always trying to, I'm always, I always have my hands in something. I'm too busy to feel sorry for myself or I'm too busy. Like, and, that, and that's by design. And I'm always trying to do a reach for the stars, like, you know, 15 levels up where it's just out of reach right now. But in, you know, in, in a short time, you know, if I bust my butt, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be obtainable. You know, like right now I'm going into, I'm going, you know, I'm in the real estate industry right now, which is fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm now going into, this is crazy, short films. So I'm meeting with production companies right now, and we're, we're going to be going to set soon. Which I I'm, love it. Yeah. Who, who knew? I mean, but it's because of Housewives, being out there, someone approached me. It was never on my radar, but because life just, you know, takes on a life of its own. Yep. It, it came, it came across my desk, and I'm like, you know, my first instinct was like, ah, I have too, I have too much on my plate now. And then I was like, you know what? No, screw it. We're doing it. And yeah. I put that on my, uh, my list. <laughs> you know what? Why, why not? And I think that's a good, I think that's a good takeaway, you know, for our listeners as well that, you know, just, just keep your, your mind and your heart open to new opportunities mm -hmm. and, um, and, and don't be discouraged and take the challenges and you may fall flat on your face. Like, listen, you know what? This, my messy muse may be a rock star or it may not, but you know what? I'm going to have fun doing it. And I think you just need to try new endeavors. And, um, you know, let, let, it, it, it will go where it's supposed to go. Exactly. By the way, congratulations on this is awesome. Uh, this is oh. really, really, I know you, 
went to law school and you, you know went into a, a law firm and did that whole deal. Now you're you're switching gears to a writer, which your books are amazing. Thank you. And you know, taking your tragedy that you've experienced, and I'll never forget. Still, I loved your father very dearly. Thank so you. I'm very, very, very happy for you. This is this is a uh, you're knocking out of the park, man. I love it. Thank you, love, and I appreciate it. And you know what? I'm like you. I just have to stay busy. And when I'm not busy, I'm bored. So um, yeah. I either have too much to do, or um, or I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know what to do with myself. So um, so we have a lot of energy. But Amber, thank you so much for coming on. I was so excited to have you, and you did amazing. Um, and um, and stay healthy, be yeah. well, and we will look for your short films. Yeah, definitely. And let me know when this is up. I'll I'll post it onto my pages. I will absolutely. Okay, right. love. Okay, talk right. to you soon. Love you. Okay. Bye -bye. Love you too. Bye. Thank you for listening. To connect with the My Messy News community, you can find us on Facebook at My Messy News. And to learn more about my books and how to work with me, please visit my website at michellemcavoy.com. That's Michelle with one L, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, McAvoy, M-C-A-V-O-Y.com. Thanks and have a great day.